Reddit. What is your best instant karma story? I was in the passing lane on the highway slowly coming up on a couple of cars in the right lane. The speed limit was about to decrease ahead and the another car came up behind me going pretty fast. Instead of gazing it to get ahead of the traffic to my right I slowed down and pulled in behind them, with the car behind me right on my butt. Once I got into the right lane the car floored it and passed me honking the horn and the passenger's body was half out of the car window yelling at me and flipping me off as they passed. Turns out the car I pulled in behind was an unmarked state trooper who promptly pulled them over. The justice. I'm an old guy, 46, and I used to buy newspapers. Comma one day I paid for one, but took two papers, because I was sick of co-workers rifling through my paper. Comma as I walked off with both newspapers, I noticed that my shirt tail got stuck in the newspaper box when it slammed shut. Comma I had to put in another $0.25 to get my shirt out. Tell me more about the old days, grandpa. I was pulled over by police for speeding, second time in 30 plus years driving. Before the officer got out of his car I made sure my window was rolled down, shut my truck off, turned on interior light, it was night time, and put both of my hands on the steering wheel. He told me how much he appreciated this and sent me on my way with a verbal warning to pay attention to speed limit. Was out for dinner with my then fiancé, now wife, and her dad, my, now, father-in-law. He's a bit of a dong to her. He got divorced and remarried, loves those kids more than my wife, gives her crap over too many things, etc, etc. So we're at the end of dinner. Father-in-law offers to pay for the meal. Okay, that's nice. My wife asks to get her leftovers boxed and she'll take them home. He starts with well, you'll just leave them in the fridge, then they'll just get thrown out, blah blah. I tell him listen, it's not your fridge, leave her alone. She and I live together at this point. He gets all mad, don't tell me how to raise my daughter. I reply then don't speak to my fiancé that way. He literally throws the bill and folder thing at me and says fine, you freaking pay then and storms out. Okay, now everyone is pee. I am. My fiancé is saying why did you have to start something etc. So I pay the bill and I'm just waiting for the receipt. Like we're waiting 10 minutes here. What the heck is going on? Tensions are rising. Her dad is waiting outside. Just building up steam and ready to blow once we get out there. I ask the waiter. Can I just get our bill and go oh no sir. You have to wait for the manager. Turns out they have a contest running where every bill is a winner. Normally you'll win a free drink. Or a petizer with your next meal. Well we won the Mithafucking grand prize. A trip for four to Florida. Whoever pays gets the prize. Well guess what sucker. I paid because you stormed out like an butthole. Karma sabi. Comma don't tell me how to raise my daughter. You should have reminded him that she is an adult. I was a $10 HR. Employee at a ski resort. Found a wallet with $500 in it which I turned in. Later I was called to the office to meet the man who owned the wallet. He gave me $100 as reward. It might just be my inner Jew. But I can't help but notice you're short a possible $400. I used to be such a dong of a 6 year old. One time I was on a bus with my older brother coming home from soccer practice. We were seated at the back right next to the big rear window. For some odd reason I thought it'd be funny to show traffic behind us all the angles of my mid left finger while staring at them with the most obnoxious facial expressions. I would wait until the bus got to a stop and proceed to do my thing when the bus shut its door and accelerated away. I was getting bored as most people would just ignore it and the reactions weren't as amusing. I decided my game needed more thrill. Instead of flipping off uncombing traffic my main target changed to pedestrians. Here's where it goes wrong. The bus got to a stop, picked up the waiting people and I had found my new target, a very buff black man. As I hear my cue which was the noise of the doors closing I proceeded to up my game by showing him both of my fingers and sticking out my tongue. This guy however, built like an athlete, looking mad as frick didn't think it was all that funny. He sprinted alongside the bus matching its speed for at least a block until the bus arrived at the next stop. The bus was not that packed but the people who were in it witnessed this big chunk of rage giving chase and getting onto the bus. I cowered behind my brother's back in tears who had up till now been oblivious to my shenanigans. 
Turned out the black guy was pretty cool about it and just told me not to do it again. He even gave me a piece of bubblegum afterwards. TL. DR. I flipped off a giant black man. He gave me some bubblegum. I read such a suck. And instantly D. I saw this lost dog sign in the neighborhood. The dog had a distinct face. So when I saw it, only a few blocks away, I was like, no crap. So I picked it up and took it home. The whole fam family was there, and they all cried and thanked me. The next week when I started a new year of high school, the husband father was my English teacher. I didn't do crap and made an A in that class. Good man, losing a dog is awful. Me, my brother, and our friend decided to be funny and get on an elevator ahead of our other friend so we could get to the hotel room first and lock our other friend out for shits and giggles. We got trapped on the elevator for an hour and a half while our other friend that we ditched got to chill by the pool for that time. I guess we deserved it. Looks like you got elevator shafted, bro. Negative experience. Well, it wasn't negative for me. I was coming onto a freeway with my big rig, signaling and smoothly switching lanes while keeping half an eye on a car behind me that had been crowding me pretty hard. It was raining. As soon as he hit the merge ramp that he happened to be following me up, he gunned it in an attempt to pass me, cutting into the no drive zone, clearly marked as such. It's called a gore point. BTW. Trivia. Problem being, my cab is 60 feet ahead of him. I'm already legally merging, and 50% of my whole rig already occupies the lane he wants. I guess if you have your head in your butt, it's easy to assume that the truck in front of you consists of nothing more than just the final 10 feet of the trailer. I don't know why, but this dude, and it's almost always a dude that does this, flips out. He screeches so hard back into his lane that I can literally feel the road tremble. He's blaring his horn, flashing his lights, and I'm just cruising. Calm as frick. I watch traffic in my drive side mirror and when I see a break, I suspect what's coming. Yep. He jerks into the left lane, floors it, gets beside my cab honking the whole way. He serves at me. It's wet out. I do not react. Too dangerous. And then cuts me off. Met. Expected. Here's the delicious surprise. He jerks into place in front of me, jams his brakes and just totally loses control of his vehicle. It is suddenly sideways at 45 miles per hour. I'm nowhere near him, having already slowed. As I watch, his car continues to spin until it's facing me. Then it whips back forward while heading straight into the ditch, where it plows earth like a farm tool. In front of all of us there on the freeway, I'm stopped. The left lane has stopped and we're just watching as this guy slowly gets out of his car, which looks pretty damaged, or at least really freaking stuck. I see that other drivers are getting out to render aid, and some are on their phones, so I just gear up out of there nice and calm. Insta karma. Felt awesome. Dude, truck drivers are my highway cheat sheet. If you guys are hauling butt down a stretch of road, it's pretty safe to assume that I can too. You guys shield me from the sun if it's too glaring. Trap douchebag cars, and let me slide next to you if I didn't slow down for that cop we just passed. I found a purse left in a cart outside a store I used to work at, against policy I opened the purse and found a name and then contacted the lady, and it was her purse and she was frantic looking for it. So I waited at the store after hours for her to come by and get the purse, and she gave me an envelope, also to open when I got home, which turned out to be almost exactly how much I was short on rent. $120. She actually knew you were short on rent. That purse was planted with knowledge of your work schedule and she is watching you. Now you only have one thing to do. Lie still. She will take you. This is long but it's relevant and true. I still don't understand how it happened. I go through periods of insomnia, and I have stayed up through countless nights over the years. One such night probably about 1.5 years ago, I went to 7-Eleven at like 6.30am, for I don't remember what. On the way out I see this native homeless guy I call Hobo Joe. I've seen him around my city Norfolk, VA, for years. Anyways, I see him and as usual he's begging for change. I don't mind helping this guy out because he doesn't spend it on booze. He legitimately needs food. So I go back in and buy him two microwave 7-Eleven hamburgers and heat them up. Side note, I dropped one on the floor and never told him. 
I give him the burgers and proceed to Tropical Smoothie which opens at 7am. I park the car and open the door. Look down and what do I see? A fresh $20 on the white line of the parking spot. Freaking nice. So that's cool but then this is the really crazy part. I come back out of Tropical Smoothie and as I approach my car, what do I find? Another $20. In the exact same spot. I checked my pocket. The first one was still there. A glitch in the matrix? TL. DR. Fed a homeless beggar and then immediately found $40 on the ground next to my car. That was Hobo Joe's final payoff for the mob loan that had made him homeless. He had got up early that morning to pay them off, then reunite with his wife and children who'd been searching for him this past decade. He tried to run from the mob, but he was full from having just eaten two burgers. I got a good one. This was a couple of years ago now. I was walking to the pub from work one rainy evening, across the Green Bridge in Canary Wharf, London if we have any East London Redditors here, when I saw a fat, drunken yob intentionally shove into a fairly nerdy looking guy who was walking along with his girlfriend. He stopped and accused the nerdy guy of pushing him and then gave him a volley of abuse. What follows was one of those moments so perfect, so full of justice and humor that you can't believe you've witnessed it, and it made a great anecdote in the pub. The fat guy took a huge swing at the nerdy guy, slipped because it was raining and completely missed, ending up in a flustered freaking mess on the floor. The nerdy looked bewildered and his girlfriend was desperately trying to drag him away, but he stood his ground. The fat guy, who seemed to have been angered further by his embarrassing fall, got back up and took another swing, which nerdy guy dodged. Again, fat guy slips and falls to his knees. Nerdy guy who is apparently as ruthless as he is good at not getting punched in the face, obviously sees this as a great opportunity to get this crap over with, and so smacks the fat guy right in the face with a sweet jab. One of those punches that makes a satisfying thwack sound. Fat guy goes down once and for all, sprawled on the bridge in the rain, while nerdy guy takes his girl's hand and they carry on their merry way together. Meanwhile I head on to the pub and have a pint in his honor. Beautiful. Just beautiful. TLDR. Drunken butthole takes two swings at nerdy guy, slips and misses both times. Nerdy guy takes his chance on the second slip and smacks him in the face, sending him sprawling. I was merging on the highway yesterday and this person in a bright green Porsche cuts me off and wouldn't let me in. I almost got into an accident, but luckily nobody was merging behind me, so I managed to merge onto the highway going 20 freaking miles per hour. He zipped ahead going about 1995. About 30 minutes later, I slow down because I see a state trooper pulled someone over. I noticed it was a bright green Porsche. Suck it. I saw a Mercedes SL hauling butt down I-65 today, easily going over 100, weaving in rainy weather in his top heavy car like a frick, endangering people unnecessarily. 5 miles later, bright silver Mercedes SL on the side of the road with a flat tire in the pouring rain. I laughed so hard. We had a light snow here in Jersey one day and my friends and I wanted to make the most of it. We took a sled out and took turns laying on it on the road and pulling each other down the street with a rope. Yeah kinda stupid but we were bored and it was entertaining. Anyway some buttholes in your typical bumblebee sounding Honda Civic road by and screamed that we were f because there wasn't any snow. They then gassed the crap out of the car, lost all control, and plowed into some bushes at the end of my street. My friends and I then watched as they fought for about 20 minutes to get their post civic out of the bush because it couldn't get any traction and what little snow there was. We had a blood drive at school after a classmate had gotten himself into a pretty serious accident. A while after, I decided to donate again. I was told that, after they tested my previous donation, I had missed out on some childhood disease, can't remember details. This meant my blood could be given to infants. I donate regularly now, and feel really good every time. I'm the same way, I think the disease is some combination of letters like CVA or CV or something like that. I also have a high iron count, so I usually donate the platelets or whatever it is, the machine they hook you up to. Since I'm not afraid of needles I feel it's my duty to make up for all those people that are lol. My brother and I were stuck in a friend's house because they had a wild guard dog that broke its chain. My brother pushes me out, so I have to run to the gate as the dog chases me. I managed to escape and went home. 
My brother got home 30 minutes later and went to bed crying because I told my mum he was sleeping over and I ate his dinner. I love that you ate his food as revenge. We went out with my uncle and his family for dinner at a really nice restaurant in Dallas F.T. Worth. There were 7 of us eating and we were all drinking wine and really just trying to see how much we spend on one dinner I guess. This increasingly drunk guy from the bar kept coming up to our table and making conversation, commenting on how awesome my 6 month old son is etc. By the end of the night he really starts to get annoying and my uncle is discussing with us whether or not he should say something, but we tell him no don't worry about it he is just having a good time, he seems like a good guy, so when it comes time to pay our bill the waiter just says have a nice evening thanks for coming in, my uncle and I are confused and ask the waiter about the check. He tells us that the guy that kept coming up to us paid our tab and that it was already done and nothing we could do about it. He even tells us that the guy does this all the time. Our bill was 1500 bucks. My uncle sought the guy out in cigar room and gave him a big hug and the guy just said you have such a beautiful family, pay it forward sometime. The guy even tipped the waiter some crazy amount from the look the waiter gave us. So I learned always be nice to the loud drunk guy in bar, you never know who is a millionaire. I liked your story until the last part, you should not be nice to people because you never know who is a millionaire, but because you should be nice to people anyways. I was out with my girlfriend at a late night movie when I spot another older couple walking. Now, I have to admit now, the guy I saw had on a long coat, cane, sunglasses at night, and one bad butt bowler type hate. That being said, I'm fairly certain that the man was a pimp or held some pimp related job. Now the wind was blowing like a mother sucker that night, and all of a sudden, I watched this guy's hat fly off out into the street. He didn't seem to mind and just kept on walking. I assume so he wouldn't look like an utter frick chasing his hat down the road. I, on the other hand, have no shame and begin chasing the hat just for fun as well as just trying to be helpful. I bring the hat back to the guy and he says, Thank, brother to which I reply, no problem, man, I just like chasing stuff, he goes in for a handshake, and I feel something in his hand, at this point I'm not sure if he just handed me a bag o' drugs or a business card, so I walk away with my girlfriend, once we get in the car I turn to her and say, that guy just gave me this, I unfold a crisp $100 bill and proceed to buy liquor for everyone that night, easiest $100 I've ever made. Comma bad butt bowler type hate. I'm imagining a tattooed muscular guy angrily throwing bowling balls down the alley and after getting three strikes in a row yelling freaking turkey I I I I I I. My personal favorite is when a car comes speeding past you, but 30 seconds later, you meet them at the traffic lights. This never ceases to entertain me. The best is when they're stopped at the light, and you blow by at full speed because it just turned green and your lane was open. Pulled into a parking lot to go pick up a little kitten we saw curled up on the ground. Immediately ran out of gas, if we hadn't pulled in there, we would have run out of gas in the middle of a busy, traffic heavy road. Bonus. Kitten. Only a redditor would be driving on a busy, traffic heavy road and be able to spot a kitten in a parking lot. One time when I was about 8, me and my older sister were fighting over a seat. This seat was godlike and was the softest and coldest in the summer heat. She won the argument with brute force and sat down on it in victory. There was a wasp lodged into the cushioned stinger exposed, right where she sat. She is allergic and was crying the whole day. I detect a certain amount of glee. A coworker who slightly outranks me was joking busting my balls on Saturday. She was giving me a hard time, saying I was a dumbass, and they paid me too much to browse Reddit all day long. She went to sit down and somehow got her right hand stuck awkwardly underneath her. It broke her pointer finger. Through the tears she looked at me and said, Guess I deserve that and chuckled a little. I worked in a bar when I lived in Newfoundland. As I was on my way in one night, I saw a guy standing by road with a sign that said something like far from home, no place to sleep, and hungry. I waved him over and gave him $5, the only cash I had and told him to take care of himself. This was a Thursday night, and I always worked on the back bar which never saw any traffic. I usually took home about $5 in tips for a Thursday, or $10 on a good day. That day, 
three separate people one big on the slot machines and gave me $20 tips each, and I ended up taking home about $75 in tips. Looks like Ray hit it big on the VLTs that night. Pepperoni for all. When I was 16 I lived out of my car, because I couldn't get an apartment, because no one would rent to a 16 year old. It was an old beater, and I had to push start it everywhere. It kicked off pretty easy in reverse. I had just pulled into Walmart to buy some decent clothes, needed more than the parts for my car, and there was a purse in the basket of the cart next to me. I opened it, and inside the wallet was a thousand in cash, and several credit cards, and a need. I sue wanted to spend it, and I was going to score new clothes and the parts I need. So I grabbed the cash and put the purse back in the cart. When I was paying for my clothes, I just couldn't bring myself to pay with her money. So I paid with mine and went back to my car. Purse was still there, so I put the money back in and looked at the address. It was right down the road, but it took me about an hour to find. I finally get there, park in the street, and the lady is standing in her garage next to her nice new car, in a fancy neighborhood, on the phone, cancelling her credit cards. I walked up, and asked if she had lost her purse. I was pretty rough looking, and I could tell she was a bit nervous, so I handed it to her, and told her I had to open it to find her address. She didn't really say anything, and I got in my car and left. I was disappointed because it seemed she didn't even appreciate it. But I went on to where I work. I stayed there in my car most of the time. The next day before work I woke up, went to McDonald's to get breakfast. I got to work, and saw the lady leaving. Then thought, ah, that wasn't her, just coincidence. When I went inside the parts for my car were there, and $100, and a note saying thanks. I was confused as heck. How did she know what parts how did she know where I worked? A few days before, I had gone over what I needed for my car, and wrote it down on the back of a pay stub, and the number to the parts house. Apparently, when I got out at her house, this paper came out of my car. She said in the note, she saw it after I left, and picked it up. After she realized all her money was in her purse, and everything, she went down and picked up the parts, and drop them off for me. Easily the nicest thing anyone has ever done. So for about an hour's drive, I got dollar sign 300 worth of parts, and $100 cash. The good feeling I had 4 weeks was worth way more than the $600 more I would have made if I kept the money. Not as generous as yours, but adopting a greyhound. Wherever we go, dog people tell us how great we are for rescuing a greyhound. Truth be told, we just got him because we heard they were lazy and we didn't want a hype up pup. Rescuing him was just a bonus. Till greyhounds are described as 45 mph couch potatoes and generally lazy. Just finished grocery shopping. Loaded the bags in my car. Get in and turn the key. Nothing. Frick. My car is dead for whatever reason. I sit there for about another 20 minutes checking the wires on my battery, making sure everything is properly in place. I just changed the battery a month ago. It can't be that. So I call my girl to pick me up. Says it's gonna be about 20 minutes. I got some time to kill. I happen to see an elderly lady pushing the cart to her car. This cart has 4x more bags than mine did. I already know it's going to be a struggle for her. I go over and offer her help. She accepts so I help her load her groceries into her car. Go back and think what the heck why not give my car one my try. Bam. It starts. My first thought. WTF. This car must run on karma. Karma. I've got two pretty positive ones. The first one came a few years back when I was delivering pizzas. I was taking a redelivery for an order that was wrong the first time. It was going to the shittiest hotel in our delivery area. The redelivery was a single, one topping medium pizza. I pull up and there's a guy that says he needs some cash for a tow truck. He gives me the typical sob story about wife and kids and blah blah blah. Normally I don't give in to those things, but occasionally I take the approach of, well, if this guy is lying to me, shame on him. Aside from that, for some reason his story seemed more plausible. We graduated from the same high school, supposedly, although he was a bit older than me. I cut to the chase, asked him how much cash he needed, and gave him the $7 he asked for. 
He ran back over to the gas station and I didn't see him again. I had a pizza to deliver. I ran up the stairs to the hotel to the room. Give them their replacement pizza. Apologize for the first mistake and leave. As I'm walking away the guy comes out and is like oh wait. We forgot to give you a tip. Any tip on a redelivery is a win. So I hustle back to the room. The guy hands me a $50 bill and tells me to have a good night. I work for an events company in the morning of our biggest annual event last year. I was sent to the office to pick up a couple things. As I'm leaving the office, another guy approaches me with a similar sob story as the one above. I'm in a hurry, and I cut him off and was just like, how much do you need he said $10 would do it. So I gave him $10 and headed on my way. Event went fine. Wasn't great in terms of the money we made. We sometimes get bonuses at my job, usually tied to this event based on the amount of money it makes. I wasn't expecting a bonus due to a sub per year, but two days later I had a bonus check worth 5% of my salary sitting on my desk. Would either of these events happened without the monetary donations? Probably. I like to think the karma gods were smiling on me, though. TL. DR. Gave two guys with sub stories some money on separate occasions. One resulted in $50 in my pocket minutes later. One resulted in a bonus check worth 5% of my salary two days later. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.